Welcome in the Birds Huddle, powered by Fanatic Sportsbook, alongside my guy Barrett Brooks. I'm Dave Zangaro. One week from today, Barrett, the Eagles take the practice field. Training camp kicks off at the NovaCare Complex. Can't wait, man. This is what it's all about. I was just telling Dave, I can remember being a player at this time and this point in my life and losing sleep <laughs> for the conditioning test. I know I was in shape. I would get up 3 o'clock in the morning knowing nobody was running at 3 o'clock in the morning in my hemisphere and just running three miles, knowing I was in shape, but I would still lose sleep over running that dag on the conditioning test. A lot, a lot more comfortable on this side of things. Huh? Right, right. Watch those guys run the conditioning test. <laughs> That's not bad. <laughs> it's been a busy offseason for the Eagles, headlined, of course, by the signing of Saquon Barkley. We got a really cool inside look at the giant side of Barkley free agency through HBO's Hard Knocks and last night we saw how tense it was for Big Blue as GM Joe Shane and owner John Mara spoke about Barkley's future. Where, 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 what's the latest? Just on the same one thing. I just got a text that Chicago's driving the price up and Philly's out. I don't know if that's true or not. Mm. <laughs> Which I don't know. If that, I'll make a couple calls. I don't even know if that's gonna, gonna happen but I'm going to have a tough time sleeping if Saquon goes to Philadelphia, I'll tell you that. As I've told you, just being up. I had been around enough players, so, but he's the, he, he's the most popular player we have by far. What broke him? Okay. Three years, 37, 37.75. We worth up to 46.7. So he got north of that. 26 guaranteed. Wait a third, over 13 now. Beats the franchise tag number and has a maximum, maximum average per year salary of 15 eight. Mm. All right. <laughs> we're gonna be, we're gonna be fine. I, I think we're looking to. <laughs> it's time now for our three point stance. Number one. You saw that there. John Mara losing sleep over Saquon Barkley signing with the Eagles. Barrett, in the end, the Giants never even formally made an offer to Barkley in free agency, and now he's here in Philly. Well, I mean, this is, this is something, you know, that he's been a franchise player for them for the past three or four years. He was the number two pick in the draft. They built that franchise around him, you know, and to have him leave the way he lived, left, you know, unceremoniously just letting him go out there. It's like you said, come on, how do you not offer him? I mean, I, I, I keep telling people, I don't look at him as a running back. I look at him as a weapon. He is going to be the major cog in this offense. There will be so many things that you could do just from his presence being there. And the Giants are losing sleep. Yes, they are losing sleep. They have to be furious. I know that fan base is furious over losing somebody like Saquon Parker. They say what they want to say. Uh, he was hurt, this and this, this and that. But it was Saquon left, Saquon rocked, Saquon up the middle for the past three years. He has been their entire team. If he could go out there and rush the passer, they would have had him do it if he could. <laughs> but at the end of the day, just let him go for his song and a dance. You know, their trash, our treasure. He will show everyone that he is up there as one of the top three running backs in this league. He's that good of a weapon. I mean, how could you let that happen? I know Mr. Mara, you know, I've collected a check from him too. I played there <laughs> one year. You know, great family, great organization. But for them to let the likes of Saquon Barkley lead that locker room, lead that franchise, uh, there should be some heads rolling from that. My favorite part of that was John Mara saying, we're going to be fine. It kind of reminded me of that meme where there's fire all around. This is fine. <laughs> Everything, nothing to see. We're, all, we're nothing okay. Nothing to see here. You know what I will say, though? Like, I, I kind of understand it this season. I think last season is really kind of where they screwed up. I yes, mean, they, yes. they should have figured out a deal with him last year. Letting him play on the franchise tag, it kind of made a, a contentious relationship. I don't think this that was really wise. Real. Yep. And for right now, I mean, honestly, for the Giants to have Saquon is kind of like a luxury position for a team that's not going anywhere it's like parking a, a ferrari out front of a shack right like why you don't need to do that so i understand why, analogy, they, yeah. why they moved on but it's still hard it's gotta be hard for the owner's stomach like that's the guy who's selling jerseys that's the guy who's putting butts in the seats now you don't have them anymore well i mean you, you put you don't put the nail on the head that's exactly what happened. For him to be drafted, the number two pick on a franchise that really had no use for him. They didn't have a quarterback. They didn't have anything there to facilitate an offense or even, you know, anything in the franchise to have them going in the right direction. And to go that direction, you just don't do it the running back. You get your quarterback, mm -hmm. then you get your running back. Hopefully it works for us here. 
Yeah, we'll see how it goes. Number two, the rest of the NFC East might be a mess. We got that look inside the Giants offseason. They don't really seem to have much of a plan. The Cowboys still have not extended Dak Prescott or CeeDee Lamb or Micah Parsons. Then there's the Commanders. They're betting big on Jaden Daniels' number two overall pick. Barrett, I don't know what to expect from the rest of the NFC East. No, just, I'm, I, I really don't know what the, F's, the, the rest of the NFC East is doing. I'm looking at Washington, and, you know, Dan Quinn comes in, defensive-minded guy. They just had a defensive-minded guy as the head coach there. They didn't get really much use out of a defensive-minded coach there. Now they bring in another one, you know, in, in, in Coach Quinn. I mean, it just doesn't make sense to me, especially at this point where the offensive coordinator, you know, Cliff Kingsbury, I mean, come on. I mean, you, you, you're talking about a guy that really couldn't get – uh, what they needed out of Murray, and now they're going on with a guy, a younger guy. Um, I don't know. I mean, they bring in veteran guys. You know, Zach Ertz will help them out, you know. But at the end of the day, this is a defensive-minded coach. The defense will be good, but the offense, I think, will still suffer from having a defensive-minded coach. Yeah, I, I like what Washington did this offseason. They kind of found some stability, which I think they needed. Like, it, they, it's been such a disaster in Washington, but they're not really going to compete this no. year. I don't think the Giants are legitimately going to compete this year either. So it really comes down to the Eagles or the Cowboys. I think the Eagles, by most accounts, have had a pretty good offseason. And the Cowboys, I don't know what they're doing. I, I really they don't. don't I mean, they're their inaction is making them worse. You're, you're going into a season where you have your quarterback on a lame duck contract. It's not a good situation. C.D. Lamb's price tag just keeps going up while you're sitting on your hands. And then Micah Parsons, that's the kind of deal the Eagles would have already had done. Well, I mean, they don't know what they're going to do with their, their um, head coaching situation. You can talk about lame ducks. Mike McCarthy's on his last year of his deal. How do you not sign him? They have no money to sign either – either of the three players, and they're not going to sign their head coach, I mean, to me, it doesn't make sense. You know, it doesn't make sense that they're going to go into this year without, you know, at least competing and trying to set the market for this uh, young wide receiver or defensive prospects they have. I mean, I mean, defensive player they have. It doesn't make sense to me. Howie Roseman went out there, set the market. This is where we're going to play our receiver, and everybody else fell in line. He's not doing that. So what does that happen? Uh, what happens in Dallas for that? You're behind the buck. Now you're going to pay guys outrageous prices. We're talking about upwards of what, 30 mil a year? Come on, man, 35 mil a year. It's going to be tough on them. Yeah, it doesn't make sense to see what they've been doing. We talked about training camp just around the corner, Barrett. The Eagles have plenty of options to be this year's training camp. Darling, I wrote a piece on our website today listing five potential candidates. Barrett, what do you think of this list? Number one, tight end Albert Equabinum. Both rookie receivers, both Anaya Smith and Johnny Wilson. I had undrafted free agent running back Kendall Milton and then cornerback Isaiah Rogers on the list. Can one of those guys follow the likes of a Rashid Bailey, a Paul Turner, <laughs> Henry Josie, all these guys who have gone down in fan lore. Well, you know what? I mean, I mean, Camp Darling, I, I think Isaiah Rogers won't be a Camp Darling because he's probably going to be starting coming out this year. I mean, he, he, <laughs> he might he be too that, good, you're saying? Right, he might yeah, be okay. too good to be on the list. But then, you know, you, just like you said, um, Albert O, I mean, he was such an interesting prospect when they got him out and you know, he had just ran. They brought him in because he had a 100-yard game, a tight end game, and, and you know, in, in preseason. Then you look at Johnny Wilson, six foot six. You know, 230-pound wide receiver out of Florida State. It's so intriguing, you know, what can he do? And then you got Ania Smith, the, you know, jack-of-all-trades guy, can run tunnel screens, do all those gadget plays, be a returner, you know. So many camp darlings, but who's going to be on the team? Those camp darlings we've been talking about don't usually make the team, but I, some of these guys maybe have an opportunity. I think you're right. I think Johnny Wilson might be my pick. He's uh, gonna, yeah, yeah. He can have two spectacular catches, kind of plucking a ball off a cornerback's head, just, yeah, and, just and a catch he, he's there. He'll be there. You know, I mean, you know how we love those guys, you know, that come in and, you know, was that Nagata last year? You know, we love those guys that come in, make two or three catches, and now they're ordained for the Pro Bowl. <laughs> yeah, fan favorites forever. Right. Once again, we're counting down the top 25 most important Eagles, a list we came up with early last month, and now we're up to number three, it's A.J. Brown. He's been an Eagle for just two seasons, and all he's done, Barrett, in these first two years is have the two best single season seasons in Eagles history for a receiver in terms of receiving yards. He's an elite wideout. Does he belong at number three on this list? Uh, I mean, I could. I mean, if you look at last year, the end of the year, I would say he was the best player we had last year. Come on, size six foot, 230 pounds, 225 pounds, can run, um, almost unstoppable running the slant. He's one of those guys that, you know, he's a game change. He's a difference maker. 
and teams were aware of it last year. We just couldn't run the ball effective enough to put somebody in the box with A.J. being out there. Well, now we have that guy. Now we have Barkley. We'll really see him have a great year this year because now you can't stop him. You know, you can't have double coverage on him and stop the run. The most demoralizing thing you can do to a defense is run the ball and they can't stop you. So you got to bring that defender in there. And Saquon's so good that he could be that determining factor on having one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. They can't bracket those guys. It's only going to make him a better player. And the, the emergence of how Smitty has come and, 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 you know, being that, you know, guy opposite of him, it's going to be really, really hard to, to really stop everybody in this offense. So, yes, they're going to look at A.J. Brown as a guy, all right, we're going to stop him first, and that's going to make everybody else better. Saquon will start running the rock, and then that's when it's going to open up for him. Now it's going to fade patterns. He's going to catch some fade patterns <laughs> going up the field, slant plays. This offense should be almost unstoppable if they play it how I'm imagining in my head, you know. Yeah, in, I mean, in my they head. certainly <laughs> have all the, the tools there, and I think back to that stretch where A.J. had six straight games, 125-plus, and after that, teams did everything they could to take him away and that makes sense he's the guy you start with number 11 you circle it if you're a defensive coordinator absolutely you figure out how to stop him you're right with the addition of Saquon if Saquon can be healthy if he can be the type of player they think he's going to be that kind of changes the math here a little bit it makes it a lot harder to just say we're going to take 11 out of the game if you have to worry about the guy in the backfield I mean you absolutely have to do that you have to take 11 out of the game I mean you mean if you're going to be any type of defense and, 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 and um, coordinator and be worth your salt, you got to take the best player on the team out of the game. And he was by far the best player of the team we had last year. He's just, you know, he's one of those guys that he would Debo little bitty um, DBs all the time, you know. And, and they would send a linebacker, have him halfway. You can't do that with Saquon in the backfield. You have that linebacker almost outside the box just to stop him from running a slam. And what's going to happen? They're going to run Saquon right up the middle where that guy used to be. Mm -hmm. So, yes, that's probably his best friend. I know him and, you know, him and Jalen have the best relationship in the world. It's going to become even better with their ability to be a, synced up and, and out there. I mean, he can do just about anything from the wide receiver position, you know, that you want from your wide receiver, the elite wide receivers in the NFL. My favorite A.J. Brown stat, Barrett. The Eagles had never had a receiver have back-to-back 1,200-yard -back seasons. He did it last year, and he went over 1,400 yards <laughs> in both of them. That's how good he's been. And let's take a little bit closer look at A.J. Brown. He's entering his sixth season, third with the Eagles. He's made three Pro Bowls in his career. And earlier this offseason, Howie Roseman handed him a massive contract extension, three years, $96 million. That'll keep him with the Eagles through the 2029 season. Barrett, that's a lot of dough. That's a lot of dough, but when you look at it realistically, it's not a lot of dough from later on. Like when you get around that 28, 29, 30 something, $35 million a year is going to be a drop in the bucket to what these receivers are going to be making. Now, we're talking about making, you know, guys making upwards of almost $30 million now. Now you get him here to 2029, and he's going to be one of those players that he's going to stay in prime shape and want to be great for his entirety of his career. He's looking for a gold jacket, so I can believe he's going to be that good for that long and that competitive for that long. Earlier this offseason, we heard A.J. Brown speak a little bit about his relationship with, with Jalen Hurts. How much better can that report get? It can only get better because they can get, you know, uh, get on the same page a lot more than they have been and have those things. All right, then you look out there and you see his one-on-one -on -one coverage and all he has to do, he ain't even got to say nothing. He just look at him just paint, just wink a little bit. I got you. You know what I'm saying? Boom, just throw it up to him. And you know he's going to go up there and get it. His size and how physical he is as a receiver just puts him in another class of receiver in the league. You know what I mean? He's that imposing of a guy. You can't even stop him when he runs the slant. It's just going to be a better for this. It's just going to be better for this team to run this offense because, I mean, pick your poison. Last year, they picked A.J. We're not, you're not going to beat us. We're going to stop you, A.J. We're going to bracket you. We're going to cover you. We're going to make sure that you don't get the ball and you don't beat us. Well, now you just can't do that. Along with Smitty's maturation, as one of the better um, wide receivers in the league, got paid for it too. You're going to have to pick your poison.